The tamer is repulsive. Level 5. Interruptions. The rat woman crawled across the makeshift bed towards me, looks of passion covering them like they were deep in heat. I was barely able to move even the slightest bit on my own accord, and due to the magic that was manipulating me, I was helpless to even voice any kind of complaint. I desperately struggled to keep my arm and hand from reaching out to grasp the breast of the over-eight-foot-tall rattan woman, but to no avail. Just as my fingers on my right hand began to sink into the soft fur and supple flesh of the white rattan's left breast, there was a massive knock on the door behind us. The five advancing rattan people paused and tried to ignore the endless banging that was trying to keep them from claiming their prize, but eventually they caved and dressed themselves. The tallest of the rattan females, the white one, with five horns made of five magic hype crystals, snapped her fingers in the left hand and her staff materialized in her right hand. Tapping the staff on the ground, a spell covered the bed that I was on, obscuring both it and me from the view of a rippling, translucent field. I managed to let a sigh of relief that I had been spared from what would have come and suddenly thanked whoever, or whatever, was now pounding on the door like a suicidal madman. The door finally opened and a relatively tall, well, for a regular rattan, rat person entered in a hurry, only to be lifted into the air, choking nearly to death. Net held aloft by hand, but instead by magic, the gray furred rattan male's bones audibly cracked as his arms and legs were twisted and contorted. His fur began to burn away until his skin underneath was shown. The torment continued as green cracks spread out like spiderwebs from various parts of his body, and only after the rattan male had screamed in agony for what felt like an eternity did his limbs return to normal and the green cracks vanish. The now furless rattan male prostrated and scraped, begging for forgiveness and mercy, but his pleas were silenced as the white furred female ground his face into the floor of her foot. After further humiliating the male for a while longer, she kicked it across the room. The diminutive male slammed into the stone wall with a sickening crunch before more sounds of bones and flesh mending were heard, evidently saving his life. Once the healing was done, the male was once again flung across the room of magic, landing in front of the females before quickly begging and scraping before them. What, what, is so important that our meeting of fun need needed to be interrupted? The deep yet highly feminine and sensual voice of the leader of the five female rattan boomed through the room. Her words were laced with not only magic, but various other skills and abilities that I was familiar with from the game. Among the skills that were being used were regular authority, succubus charm, higher tier intimidation, and more. The powers were layered over each other to form a force that the rattan male could not stand against. Well, speak, talk quickly! The white-furred one was obviously a rage that she and the other four had been interrupted, and they all had looks that could kill. They each were emitting a heavy dose of lethal intent, and the level of bloodthirst in the air was seriously preventing the poor, furless rattan from even telling them why he had come. Eventually, the terrified little rattan managed to stammer out one word. Dwarves! It was at that moment that the sound of explosion ripped through the tunnels and reached the room we were in. The white-furred one clicked her tongue and kicked the male rattan out the door. She peered over her shoulder back at me before tapping her staff on the ground. Several summoning circles appeared in the room, and from them came creatures that I recognized. The beings summoned were only able to be summoned by the end boss of the final Mythic Plus raid in the fourth expansion. It was only then that I realized who each of the four unknown rattan women were. The five females were as follows. Squeak, Face Dealer, from the Mystic Plus Raid, the Verminous Assassinorium, Rippa Steel Whiskers from the Mystic Plus Raid, the Rat War, Grima Grease Gears from the Mystic Plus Raid, Fatal Engines, Snickety Katsu from the Mystic Plus Raid, the Flesh Shaper's Pit, and finally, the game boss for the whole expansion itself, Chew Snowfur from the Mystic Plus Raid, 
ascension of the Vermin Queen. All of them looked radically different from what they looked like in game. They were taller, more humanoid, and, in all but Grimma's case, busty beyond any normal reason. Their fully dressed attire looked like what one might expect from a sexy cosplayer, not what their original outfit looked like. Chu was not wearing the flowing and heavy robes from the game, but rather a skimpy, borderline lingerie ensemble of mostly dominatrix-like leather cloth with a few metal pieces thrown in for good measure. Instead of her in-game staff, she held one far larger from magicite crystal that looked to be an oversized dwarven skull held in place by strings made of pure magic. In fact, each of the fearsome five, as they were called by players, wore attire more suited to the one of the older games, like Terra or one of the old JRPGs where heavy female armor was basically just a bikini made of several metal plates and some cloth. Even Squeak's coverings were mostly designed to accentuate her features while also keeping her sizable bust from bouncing around. Ripa, the one who was supposed to be the frontline fighter of the group, was wearing mostly leather and chainmail with some spiky and serrated metal parts at various places aside from the breastplate designed to not only protect her chest, but also restrict it. Snickety was basically a slutty nurse for a tire stained with stuff I didn't even want to guess the identity of. And as for Grima, Grima was inside what appeared to be an empowered exoskeleton, much like the ones used by the UN, just with more brass, sinister-looking attachments, and glowing pieces of refined magicite crystal. Another explosion shook the tunnels, and the sound of collapse was heard. Reaper! Squeak! Snickety! Grima! Chu yelled out toward the other four. Her face was contorted with rage and malice as her glowing green eyes burst into emerald flames. Her mouth twitched before a sadistic grin slipped out. Kill, die! Kill, die, everything! No mercy, no retreat, no surrender for the races! Kill, die, them all! Wait, no! Bring, deliver the head leader to me! Alive! Now, now! The other four members of the Rattan ruling council made a slight bow before rushing off to deal with the Dwarvian threat. Chu was shaking with rage as her tail violently swished around like the thrashing of a kraken's tentacle. Eventually the sounds of explosion died away as the sounds of Rattan feet rushed through the tunnels or placed it. The reinforced door slowly closed on its own before the audible sounds of the locks falling into place rang out, snapping Chu out of her hate-induced trance. She slammed her staff down on the floor, forced enough to crack it, and greenish mist flooded out from the cracks in the ground. The mist filled the whole room, and eventually the forms of what I assumed to be the invisible dwarves could be seen as the mist clung to them and made their transparent bodies stand out like sore thumbs. The visibility faded, and about seven Dwarvian rogues made themselves known. Damn! Didn't expect to die this way! Remember the mission. Death is a preferable alternative to the deaths of our kin and king. I ye speak the truth. The dwarves reached into their cloaks and pulled something, but before they could fully do so, they were held in place by the same magic that robbed me of my free will. Looks of terror slowly creeped across the little was visible of the faces of the dwarves as Chu snapped the fingers of her left hand and the suicide vest beneath the cloaks of the dwarven rogues teleported off of them. Chu looked at the vest for a while before once again snapping her fingers, teleporting the vest away. She laughed at the dwarven rogues before cocking her head. How many times did you think to try that? How many times did you try it? Too many to count. That is how many. You dwarves need need to think of better assassination styles. Little Squeak thought of that method centuries before you tried it for the first time. The Dwarvian race had a resistance to magic, but even they could barely respond with what was controlling them. Where? One of the Dwarvian rogues managed to stammer out of a single word. Chu giggled before levitating the dwarf who spoke into the air and into her face. 
She leaned over to his ear and spoke in a whisper that everyone could hear. What do the races do with mail they don't want? Return to sender.